Hi there, Toy here, and I thought I'd talk about some TV. <laughs> maybe over a year or I don't know two I don't know it's been a long time since I've done a have you seen this video and since it's a lazy Saturday I don't have a whole lot going on um, I thought I'd do this um, I am gonna be shooting a very short um, kind of reading update video it's not my typical video where I talk about you know what I've read and reviewed and all that kind of stuff because I'm just getting back into the swing of things with that haven't been reading or writing a lot haven't even been watching a whole lot of TV but I recently started reading and writing and watching TV so I thought I'd share some stuff that um, I watched recently and I think everything that I'm going to talk about today I watched on Netflix um, but um, whenever I do these I, it could be something I saw on Netflix you know, regular network TV, Hulu, Amazon, whatever. <laughs> so, it's, like I said, it's been a while since I've done one of these. And so, I basically want to talk about three things um, that I watched. And um, so, I'm going to start with the Enola Holmes movie that's on Netflix right now. And I think I've, I know I've read at least one Enola Holmes book, maybe two, I don't know. Um, I like the Enola Holmes books. Um, they're they're kind of like the Sherlock Holmes books, but it, you know the perspective is very different because um, she's a younger girl. She's the sister of Sherlock, and um, oh, I always forget the brother's name. <laughs> but anyway, um, to say all that is, I thought it was a really cute movie. I liked the fact that Helena Bonham Carter was in it, and she plays the mom, and. Um, you know, so there's a lot of like empowerment things going on in the storyline. Um, I, I will say that the portrayal of Sherlock Holmes is probably one of the better ones um, that I've seen outside of the, um, what, what what's the guy's name, Cumberbatch? <laughs> I, I love his portrayal of Sherlock Holmes, I really do. Um, I like it much better than the Robert Downey Jr. one. Not that his is bad, but it's, you know, it's a little crazy, it's a little wacky. But I think the Sherlock Holmes portrayal in this movie is a bit more reserved, and I think it's kind of more in line with the books. I've only actually read one, like, classic Sherlock Holmes story, and it was a short story. And I know, I, it's terrible. I, there, I, I actually own collections of the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle series. I just never read them, and I need to do that. But anyway, um, to say all that was that the Enola Holmes movie I thought was really um, entertaining, good for the whole family, and um, I thought Millie Bobby Brown did a really great job in the role, and um, yeah, it was cute. So, you know, check it out if you haven't. Um, the next two things that I'm going to talk about are, are anime. But one of them can, I'll, I'll get more into it in just a second. So the first one, I watched it because of um, Halloween. Um, I don't really celebrate Halloween, but you know, it's the season. People are reading spooky stories and stuff like that and watching spooky things and dressing up in costumes. And stuff. I love to dress up in costumes. So when I say I don't celebrate it like in the traditional senses, um, I just it's just not culture that I grew up with where... Halloween was like this big thing. I mean, yeah, we know it happens. People eat candy, trick or treat, that kind of stuff. So anyway, I did want to kind of get into something creepy for that. So I watched an anime series called Parasite, and it is very creepy, but not in the sense of like ghouls and goblins. I think it's more of um these like alien things come down and take over like people's bodies, that kind of creepiness. Um, so it's a story that is it, it, first of all it's anime so there's always going to be like this kind of element of silliness to it and um what's crazy about it is, is there's a youtuber that i follow and of course i can't remember her name right now but maybe i'll post it in the video when this goes live and she actually talked about the manga she read the manga and it's on her list of like horror mangas like good horror mangas and i thought that was so cool because i don't read a whole lot of manga but uh, I sometimes watch animes that are based off of mangas. So the fact that the book is on her list kind of get made me feel like, oh look, I'm I'm kind of cool. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So anyway, I watched Parasite. I liked Parasite. 
And I do recommend it to anyone who wants to get into something that's a little creepy, very weird. Um, um, just to give you kind of basic synopsis, like I said, like these like alien things come and they take over people's bodies, but this isn't like a body snatcher type thing. Um, they take over the person's body and they use it as a host, but they actually feed on people also. So, um, and they can like twist their bodies in these weird ways or whatever. And so this one um, lands into this, um, this kid's body, and but he wakes up and he sees it. And he's able to stop it from taking over his whole body. But the thing is, is once they're in, they're in. So this thing that was supposed to take over his whole body only ends up taking over his hand. So he really, he essentially develops this symbiotic relationship with this creature that was supposed to basically like devour him. And so as the theory goes on, you find that these other creatures are like out to get them because they, they, they're like, they didn't follow the plan, I guess. So not to give too much of it away, um, if you want to check it out, it's on Netflix. It's called Parasite. It is scary, and it is anime, and I like it, oddly enough. <laughs> All right, so the next and the final one that I'm going to talk about, I guess that it is an anime, but the reason why I'm mentioning it is because it's, there's also a live-action version of it. So I will go ahead and give the caveat that this is not a U.S. adaptation of it. I find to be very disappointed whenever the U.S. tries to adapt an anime. I feel like they always just kind of mess it up. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they take the product that was not originally targeting Western viewers and they try to make it appeal to Western viewers when I don't think that's necessary. If there's a popular product out there, just keep it the way it is and don't try to change it too much. I mean, yes. Going from anime to live action, some things have to be changed. I get that. No big deal. And um, I think the reason why the live action version of this one worked out is because I believe um, it's Japanese anime and that it was adapted by um, Japanese production company. Don't quote me on all of this. I didn't do the research. I'm literally just talking about it right now. So anyway, the series is called Erased, and it is a very dark and emotional series um not usually like my cup of tea like i uh, used to watch crime dramas i went through a period of my life where i watched like crime dramas and stuff and i stopped doing it because i just couldn't take it anymore but that's kind of what this um series is so i watched the anime first and then i watched the live action version if you are absolutely just opposed to watching anime you should at least check out the live action I, I actually um, prefer the anime version, but the live action version is just as good. Just know that this story is kind of split into two parts, and um, the first part of the live action matches the anime like note for note. Once you get into the second part, that's where the kind of adaptation comes into play where the live action story changes quite a bit from the anime story but still keeps in line with the overall theme and so just to kind of give you kind of a rundown of this story you basically have this concept they don't call it this in the um in the story but it, it's basically time, time travel but not in the like back to the future sense of time travel if you are at all familiar say with the movie um butterfly effect you know in that story the kid would read something from his journal or think of a past memory and he would go back to that time as that time so he wouldn't like run into himself or anything like that if he went back to a memory where he was five then he was actually five and whatever he did was rewriting the present and the future and that's the way the time travel in this story works this kid has this ability to go back into his own timeline and make changes to things and um you never really know why um even at the end, they never explicitly state it, although you figure it out that the only reason he has this ability is because he was meant to go back and write something that went wrong when he was a kid. And so half of the story is kind of told in the present and half of it is kind of told in the past. It sounds confusing, but it's really not. The way they handled it, it was so well. You don't get confused at all with the timelines because they're not jumping back and forth in a way that's confusing, um, like I said, and plus you don't have that element of, you know, running into past selves and stuff like that. 
And so um, I think um, the thing that was for me most compelling about this series, whether the anime or the live action, is the content itself was so hard and, and tough and complex. I mean, just trigger a warning for anyone watching this, it, it deals with um, child abuse, child neglect, um, serial killers, uh, criminal investigations, cover-ups, there's all kinds of stuff, uh, all these different things. Um, they hint at, you know, things of, um, you know, not hinting, I, depending on which version you watch. Let me say that. Like I said, the live action, they do change some things. So, but there are like hints or, or actual, um, like things that, that go along with like pedophilia, like all these different things um, that represent like evil and dark things like are part of this um, anime. But I will say that all of this is in there and it is a triumph over evil type story. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly how it ends because I don't want to give you like this false impersonation that at the end of it, everything is hunky dory. It's still kind of rooted in reality a little bit, but that's, that's, I think for me, that's the good thing about anime is that most of the time, you know, that there's going to be some type of triumph over evil. Um, even if it's not like an ideal, like westernized um, idea of that. So I really, really like the erased anime and the live action. Um, if you want to give it a go, go for it. Um, some other things, just so that you don't feel like it's too dark. Family is a big major thing. Friendship, how um, knowing oneself, um, relying on others. So there's a, all, all these different themes in the show that really just, I thought were just incredible. And I'm glad that I decided to check it out. I mean, I have kind of you know, like stepped back and kind of shut down from things a little bit. Haven't really been indulging in entertainment. So I, I watched these um, three things fairly recently and I'm really glad that I did. And in another video, I'll tell you about what I'm reading and writing and all that kind of stuff. So that is what I've seen lately. I wonder if you've seen it. Maybe you want to check it out. Maybe you want to tell me what you've seen. And that's all I have for now. Bye-bye.